Hey, Monica. How are... Oh, Zoe. Glad you're here. Let's get started. The other girls are already here. Natsuki and Sayori are standing in the corner, and Yuri is sitting in the middle of the room, her head buried in a book. I closed the door behind me. Hey there. Didn't think you'd show up. Don't worry about her. She's always like that. Monica turns to me. I trust you were able to finish writing your poem. Oh, uh, well... I see, so you didn't bother then. I did write something. Well, let's have a seat. I'm excited to hear what you wrote, Hallie. We all take a seat at the table in the middle of the room. Now, why don't we begin? We spread out among the classroom and begin sharing in groups of two. Who should I show my poem to first? Well, we said we didn't write a poem. I'm gonna show it to Monica, more suspicious of her. I walk over to Monica, who's still sitting at her desk. Here, you can read mine first. She hands me her poem, and I read it aloud. Well, if I'm reading it aloud, then I guess I'm reading it in my regular voice, then. Overcast. Amid the skies of gray, clouds softly flow. Their muted, er, muted hues obscure the sun's bright gleam. In a dance of shadows, they gently grow. With each passing moment, breezes bestow a sense of calm, a tranquil, hazy dream. Amid the skies of gray, clouds softly flow. The birds' songs are hushed, as if in hallowed woe. Yet in this tapestry, there's beauty to redeem. In a dance of shadows, they gently grow. The world below, with muted colors, glow. A subtle palette, like an artist's scheme. Amid the skies of gray, clouds softly flow. The earth beneath the veiled skies lies low. In overcast embrace, a timeless theme. In a dance of shadows, they gently grow. Amidst the somber canvas, life's ebb and flow. A meditative moment, as if in a dream. Amid the skies of gray, clouds softly flow. In a dance of shadows, they gently grow. Monica looks at me with a concerned expression. Can't you tell? I ran out of time, so I basically filled in the blanks with random adjectives during first period. No, not at all. I thought it was pretty good. Really? That's a relief. I wasn't sure how all the energy would translate. No, it was great. The way you described the sky, the clouds, the shadows, it's beautiful. It has a certain melancholy to it. Monica smiles and takes a deep breath, sighing in relief. Thank you. I'm glad at least one person can tolerate my ad libs. Truth be told, I wanted to try out writing a villanelle. Hey, villanelle? I was nervous about the result. I'm still not sure if their style was quite what I was going for, but I suppose that's the bottom poetry. She laughs and takes another sip of tea. So, how about yours? Alright, here. She accepts my poem, unfolds the paper, and begins reading. Who is real? In twilight's grasp, a presence once so near, vanished like whispers in the fading light, yet dawn's soft rays revealed you still appear. Your enigmatic play, unraveling depths, resigned to unweave what was veiled. In recollections, haze you falter. I little on the nose, don't you think? Heh, <laughs> yeah. It was kind of hard coming up with a new topic after that. Still, it was a good read. It's always nice to read something that makes you think, isn't it? Yeah. Listen, there's a specific subject I wanted to talk to you about. Oh, really? I lean in a little closer. How could someone survive a car crash that bad, yet not have a single scratch on her? Monica pauses, her usually upbeat demeanor shifting. You're talking about Yuri. You recognize her too, right? Is she not the same woman who died on Sunday night? A uh, woman? Shh! Lower your voice! She motions for me to follow her to follow her to the back of the classroom. When we're a safe distance away, she opens her mouth. This isn't something I want the others to worry about. Understand? In other words, I'd like for you to keep what you saw that night to yourself, is that alright? Sure. Why? What's going on? Like, I'm not losing my mind, right? She she doesn't have a twin, does she? No, no, nothing like that. She's just a unique girl, that's all. So what's with all the secrecy? Is she some sort of criminal? Look, just trust me when I say that this is not something we should be spreading around, okay? But... Promise me, please. We have enough problems on our hands. I don't think I've ever seen Monica this sincere before. I nod. Okay, I promise. Thanks, I appreciate it. She turns and walks away. I follow, and soon the calm atmosphere turns. She's 
Dolnatsky's arms for a second there. Well, let's talk to this mysterious girl next. Yuri, what's up? How are you alive? As we make our way back towards the center of the room, I spot Yuri standing at her desk. Her head is down, and she's twirling a lock of hair between her fingers. <laughs> she notices me looking at her, and her body stiffens. Okay, hold on a second. Did I... No, that was her saying it. Yeah, I did that correctly. Though startled, Yuri quickly regains her composure. Oh, it's you, Holly. I didn't expect you to choose me to share with. Well, it's not like there are more, more, or not like there were many options. That's true, I suppose. I hand my poem to her. Hmm. Her face shows no emotion. Interesting. It's um very descriptive. Imagery is rather vivid. Oh, thank you. However, she frowns. Well, your prose is adequate. So I'll give someone pedestrian, wouldn't you say? I tilt my head. I beg your pardon. It meant no offense. I'm saying the subject matter was rather dull. Dull? It's a poem about death and tragedy. How could that be dull? Well, that may be so, but if a writer is not interested in the subject they're writing about, their audience will notice. She hands me back my poem. I'll keep that in mind. Anyway, do you think I could take a look at yours? Certainly. Reflection. In the distance, I stand observing you. As you tread a path concealed in shadows, soft, muted. Those eyes, once filled with dreams, Vivid hues, now veiled. I reach out, yearning to draw you near. Yet my words falter, swallowed by trepidation. Is the or in the recesses of my mind, visions emerge, or you, or you near life's edge. The darkness beckons, my soul shudders, grappling in fear. Huh. This is actually quite good. You think so? She perks up. Absolutely. The tone, the imagery, it's all great. Really? The, uh, um, the, the things... She blushes and looks away. It's about a villain, isn't it? Uh, well, no. It's um, about a friend. Really? Yes. She's very dear to me. I worry about her. Hmm. That must be rough. It is, but the worst of friends. More often than not, I find myself relying on her when I know I shouldn't be. I can't help myself. Even though it hurts her, I... I really am useless, aren't I? She looks at me with a sad smile. That's not true. It's not like you're asking her to do these things, right? No, I suppose not. Back to your poem. Perhaps I was a bit too harsh. Death, pain, and grief, loss. These are common themes in the literary arts. The writer's perspective is shaped by their experiences and their interpretation of the world. You wrote your poem through the mixed feelings of concern you felt for someone who probably doesn't deserve such consideration. I suppose in that regard, Poems are rather similar, wouldn't you say? Uh, I'm not sure what to say. I guess I was being rather hypocritical, wasn't I? She laughs. Oh, what a silly mistake. Anyway, um, thank you for sharing with me. Uh, your work wasn't that bad. With that, she turns and walks away. Hmm. Hmm. Natsuki. Sorry, I guess. Wait. I get up from my chair and walk over to Natsuki. She's sitting at her desk, glaring at me. Ah, yeah. How are things going? Fine! You. Yeah. Just great. Listen, I wanted to, to share poems with you. Is that okay? Oh, sure. Go ahead. I take a seat next to her and read her poem aloud. Sprinkles. Oh, wait. Oh, I'm reading it aloud. Sprinkles. Fluffy clouds and sunny days. Kittens playing in funny ways. Rainbows arching in the sky. Cupcakes sprinkled. Oh, so high. That's it. <laughs> um... Yeah? What? What is it? I'm sorry, is this a poem or a children's book? What's that supposed to mean? Her face is flushed red. No, no, nothing. It's just the theme was a bit cute. So it was childish. A poem doesn't have to be sophisticated, you know. She puffs her cheeks. Whoa, hey, I didn't say that. I raise my hands defensively. Well, that's what you meant, wasn't it? Admit it, this is exactly what you expected me to write. Her voice rises as she becomes more animated. She stands up, pointing a finger at me. You think you're better than me because your poem is longer than mine? She stomps her foot. Well, I'll have you know that. That's enough, you two. Save the arguments for after we've finished sharing poems. Hmm. Let's keep this simple, shall we? Right. Natsuki sits back down, her face still red. Um, I don't really think... Shut up! 
she lifts open her binder and pulls out a folded piece of paper. Here! Just forget about the last one, alright? She thrusts her poem into my hands. I look at the paper. Describe yourself! On Tatooine, there you stand, with charms as grand as grains of sand. Your wit, a masterpiece indeed, a master only in narcissistic breeding. You're simply perfect, no contest, your ego a sight to impress. But as you bask in your own glory, your depth of character is a story. So keep on shining, oh bright star, and your universe near and far. But in our hearts, us like our smirk resigns, for all your charm, the truth belongs. So what's with the Star Wars reference? Wow, um, this is pretty harsh. You think so? Seriously, I don't know if I can even say this aloud. In language, I mean... Narcissistic breed? Really? Yeah, well, I thought you'd synergize with it a little better. Considering it's about you... She crosses her arms and looks away. Anyway, how about your poem? Tell me, is it about Monica or maybe someone else? Or were you just feeling... nostalgic? She glances over towards Sayori. What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing, never mind. She snickers. I roll my eyes and hand her my poem. She unfolds the paper and starts reading. It was alright. She shrugs. I can tell you put a lot of work into it. I can respect that. Thanks, I guess. Hey, she didn't totally hate it. I guess maybe it being short offset the dark themes. Sayori! I pass my poem over to Sayori, who eagerly accepts it. Oh, this is really good! Is it about Monica? Eh? Well, why do you think that? Just a lucky ghost. I like the way you use metaphors. Uh, thanks. So, what did you write? The recording isn't very good. I didn't get very much sleep last night, so my thoughts were sort of all over the place. She hands me her poem, and I read through it. Paradise. In fields of gold, where laughter sings, a deal of joy in my heart it brings. Beneath the skies, I skip and play. Amidst the blooms, I find my way. Yay! A dance in sunlight, a soft distress, a mournful chord, a melody, somehow. The wind is a rhyme, Sayori. And the sail is swiftly flee, my sense of void that seeks to be. What did you think? I think it's, um, different. Different bad or different good? Just different, I suppose, but I can't really give you a critique when I'm not sure what it's trying to say. Hmm. She pouts. Just write something else. I can't help but laugh a little. That's so funny. Sorry, it's just the way you sometimes talk, I swear. Huh. I shake my head. Now then, I believe that's all for today. Thanks again, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Already? Well, we barely spent any time together. Sorry, Fury really isn't feeling too well. She needs some rest. Don't worry, we'll just spend more time together tomorrow. Yeah! She pouts and shrugs. Well, it was fun, Natsuki. I enjoyed sharing with you. Yeah, sure! What was with that? With that, we begin packing up. Anyone up for heading to the mall with me? I'm kinda bored! Yeah, I'm sorry, I have no plans! You too, Monica? I have a student cast. Fine! She crosses her arms and turns her head. Guess I'll go home then! She storms off. The meeting is only 30 minutes, I'm free after that. Natsuki is nowhere in sight. Another time then. See ya, Holly! Siri gives me a small wave and heads out. See you tomorrow, Holly. I turn to leave. Stepping into the hallway, I make my way downstairs towards the front entrance. Oh gosh, we got clobbered by a shadow. Oof! I stagger forward, almost losing my balance. A blonde haired girl stumbles back, her arms wrapped tightly around her books. Sorry, are you okay? She smiles and tilts her head, her expression apologetic. No, it was my fault. I should have been paying attention. Still, so I'm the one who should be apologizing. She holds out her hand. I'm Nakamura Akemi. Uh, I stare at her blankly. Oh. Oh, and your name is? Oh, oh, right. Sorry. My name is Kuzahara Holly. It's a pleasure to meet you. I reach out and take her hand. Her grip is firm and her skin is cold. Pleasure's fine. You're new here. Yeah. I can tell. The school's pretty big and you look a little lost. If you're looking for a club, you can give the garden club a try. We're not a very big group, but I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. Um, my mind goes blank. 
Actually, it's just me. Sorry, I'm already a member of... Look, I've got to go. If you have the chance, please stop by. It's the whole greenhouse behind the school. I was supposed to water the plants today, but I've been swamped with work. She gives me another smile, waltzing off. I stand there for a moment, staring at the empty space where she was just standing. Sigh, I said aloud. What the hell was that? Who was that girl? She seemed friendly, but there was something off about her. Maybe I should visit her in the garden. Or maybe I'd better not. Perhaps later. Right now, I need to find Sayori. No fingerprints, no witnesses, and no ways. This is too early for this shit. The detective takes a sip of his coffee. He stares at the report, his face drawn and tired. Who should I... I'm trying to think of a good voice for... Slow day, detective. Major Kagure, I wasn't informed you would be joining us. Just checking in, making sure everything's running smoothly. He puts a hand on the detective's shoulder and squeezes it reassuringly. We've got it under control, don't worry. We'll get the bastard, we always do. That's the spirit, detective. He smiles. Now the board doesn't share your enthusiasm, I'm afraid. I'd like to introduce you to Detective Hiroaki Sato. He'll be assist- Hiro? You're assigning me him? Or you're assigning him to my case? Indeed. This isn't a kid's game, Takao. The last thing I need is some Tokyo hotshot showing up and throwing my investigation. Not to mention the chief will be. Chief Morishita is no longer in a position to influence your investigations. He leans in close. Besides, I've done my homework. I know how much of a hard worker you are. I'm sure you can make up for his shortcomings. 